started Make Life Fun podcast because I needed more fun in my life. When I became a mother, I, for some reason, just put on this like high ponytail, mom jeans, and nose to the ground. I wasn't having fun. It wasn't until I started having fun that it started becoming easy. Fun and mental health go hand in hand for me. I've been in this mental health game my whole life. And mental health as a mom, oh my gosh, huge. I think that healing myself and motherhood has, has to go hand in hand because he is happier and better for it because I've done the work on myself. And it needs to start with you believing in yourself that no matter what is going on around you, that you as a person right now, you are worthy. You are purposeful. You are needed. I feel like I'm finally home. <laughs> I feel like I'm finally in this place where I am happy to be me. I'm happy in my skin and I am so lit up to like help other people. I'm so lit up for other people to experience this because it's what my wish and my mission is for every woman is to find safety within themselves because it took me a long time to get here. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Josie. Today on this very special episode, we have our pilot episode. Oh my gosh, you guys. Our guest, Antonia Daniek, is here. She is a motivational speaker and author, a holistic coach, and she's actually a best-selling author. And Antonia, I'm so excited to have you here. Let's make life fun. Off the beaten path is great, but now that I have a child, we're not really off the beaten path quite as often. <laughs> yeah, I think we, we come deeper into what we are really about. Yes. In doing things, we can figure out where we are really going. Yeah, it's definitely in the action, because if I never had done the Backroads podcast, I would have never been led to start this Make Life Fun podcast yes. and really feel it in my soul that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And these are the yes. things that I want to be talking to and the conversations I want to bring out to the world. Yes. An hour ago, I was reflecting on because I had a plan for a podcast last year. And mm -hmm. Somehow I feel it's the title is no longer or maybe it is. So it's like hmm, it's feeling into it again and, and recalibrating. Absolutely. I can completely understand that. And you're all about intuition. That's like your jam. Yes. And it leads to intuition anywhere. Right. So I, I do a lot of business mentoring as well, because when we are founders, startup founders, it's a lot about intuition. It's mm -hmm. not just about strategy and whatever. It's like if we want to build an aligned business, we need our intuition on yes. board. Right. That's what I'm learning more and more every day. I feel like even in motherhood, like intuition, yes. I will know he's awake before he even moans. Like I will just have a sense that my son's awake or the little I, things like that. I take the phone out of my pocket because it's off, like the sound is off and that my child calls. <laughs> it just blows me away that we can be that connected. Yeah. I, even I'm with my husband, like I think something and he speaks it. <laughs> so it's like. <laughs> that's complete okay. connection right there that's, that's amazing so cool. one thing that jumps to my mind now also with regards to like the parallels that i see also with my other work is to really support the kids in their unique path mm -hmm. which is very much connected to intuition because they cannot tell us right yep and it's us giving them the space holding the space for them yes and i think that's the same that i do with other clients mentees as well and intuition is a big part of it it's like when yes. do i say something when do i listen and if i say something what do i say so it's really or how do i act or interact one other thing that comes to my mind is not to lose ourselves in motherhood two days ago i, I did a whole set of topics offering to a network where where i could teach to see where i fit into this amazing huge <laughs> programs and this was one of the pieces that i experienced myself several times and i think we can lose ourselves in motherhood and in relationships as well and motherhood is like the first thing is we need to lose it right and then there's a point where it's good to to also be on our own feet again it's a journey it's an amazing journey it's think, an yeah. amazing journey Yesterday, I was reflecting myself on this whole becoming a mom and how I did lose myself, even though I went in with the intention that I wasn't going to because everybody has talked about it so much. But I think yeah. because I heard it so much, it was just like, this is what you do. You become a mom and then you put your nose down to the ground. You put on your mom jeans, you put your hair in a ponytail and you just get to work like you don't exist anymore. That's how this whole show came about was because I did for months. <laughs> 
<laughs> I didn't leave yeah. the house. I let my husband do all the shopping. I just was like, baby, that was like my main focus. And I maybe that's creating this intuitive connection because we go full in, like we go with the baby, we just go full in tune with the baby. And then once the connection is there, we can go our paths, but, and the connection stays yes. like my, my little one is now taller than all of us. He's 18 <laughs> and it was different with every child. So to build this connection is different with every child. I think losing yourself in, in motherhood is definitely also connected with intuition and self-care, mm -hmm. right? Being gentle with ourselves is a big thing. I think huge. It goes far beyond motherhood, but also especially motherhood where we really want to give our life for them, right? We would, <laughs> we, we do will, it. yeah. Yes. But I love what you just said about that's how nature kind of created it. I never thought of it that way because it was me so neither. effortless. <laughs> it was so effortless for me to... Me neither, but just listening to you, I was like, oh, sure. That's how it's established. It was so easy. Like I didn't, it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't planned. I went in with the full intention that I've heard this. So I'm going to not do this. I was just so all in all about him. It's interesting because the last days I saw several interviews also with moms was speaking about like what I for sleep deprivation or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I had two years and three years. So I had like seven years where I didn't sleep a whole night. And then once it's back, it's suddenly like, ah, that's how it felt. <laughs> you're in a daze but when we're in there we're in there and no one like even if they would tell us how it is to be a mom how to do it how even if you would learn it somewhere we wouldn't know it so all new parents with the first child are completely in the cold water like mm -hmm. but it's not explainable it's not so we have to go full in to get into it and to find how we deal with it yes because that's different for everyone Absolutely. The only thing I would tell new moms is give themselves grace. Like that is the biggest word that saved me was giving myself grace for not knowing, giving myself mm -hmm. grace for beating myself up, give myself grace for this is my first time learning something new. And I found that in that grace, I was able to be a better mom, even in my tunnel vision, yes. <laughs> I was able to be a better wife. Because I was like not beaten up on myself so hard because it yeah. is something that's so new. Yeah. I wouldn't have known what giving myself grace would mean if you wouldn't explain it to me. <laughs> so for me, what I named it is like being gentle with myself mm -hmm. and not judging myself and really reminding myself because the judgment comes in between. Yeah. It's like, oh, look Absolutely. at your kitchen. Yes. <laughs> it's like, and then especially when, when the visitors come, it's just like, okay. <laughs> Yep. Welcome in my home. <laughs> exactly. And from a lot of moms I know, they beat themselves up because they're dropping the ball on some things. And they're calling it almost like a sacrifice that they are spending time with their kids at the detriment of the house being dirty. And I said, that is to me, in my mind, in my heart, not a sacrifice at all. Because at the end of the yeah. day, your child should be I mean, the most important thing. So letting those things fall for the time, I think is safe. Yeah. But a lot of people don't feel like it's safe. They feel like they have to keep all these balls in the air and they don't. And this is the piece which is impossible, right? Impossible. Yeah. I was just talking to my sister the other day and she was like, I sacrificed cleaning the house to watch a movie with my family. And I was like, girl, enjoy that. Like you deserve that. Dishes will be there tomorrow. Like hearing it, I just couldn't believe it. Cause I was just like, she probably the whole time watching that movie was just thinking of all the things that she had to do. And the beautiful thing is when they're older, it's just like, if they complain, it's like, do it yourself. It's like, you can clean, you can cook, you can wash the washing. It's like, there are no clean, clean clothes. I'm like, yeah, so get to work. Ask me how it works or ask your dad. He's usually at the weekend, he does all the washing. It's like, he comes home like, what's there to do? <laughs> When you were raising your kids, was your husband gone too? Well, he left for the first long period of time mm -hmm. when my second one was five weeks. Oh, wow. So then I moved to my mother-in-law for five months because I just, I had a screaming baby and a two-year-old, which yes. was just not possible. I packed my car and I went to her. And That's I beautiful. <laughs> I am so glad that you said that. I think that just popped in my head. Like, why don't moms ask for help? Yeah, and I was living somewhere where we just moved because of his work. So there was no one around. 
And we got notice on like New Year's Eve that he would leave uh, mid of February. And I was highly pregnant. He was still there. He missed the birth because he was in a training, but two hours were not enough to, to travel. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then with the third one, he was mostly there until he was one and a half. And then he was away for seven months, like twice in two years. Wow. And since, I don't know, since the last eight years, it's only the weekends. Wow. Yeah. Now that the kids are grown. <laughs> but it's the weekends, which is really nice. It's more than six, seven months, right? Right. <laughs> and so how did you navigate that period? And how did you find it within yourself to ask for help? Well, back then, it was just the, the most normal thing to do. Like my, my mother-in-law is alone in her house and she would sometimes come to help me anyway. And my father-in-law, they're separated and he remarried with another child and they were just some kilometers. <laughs> so he would then come and he was one of the ones where my daughter was silent. So he was the baby whisperer. Oh, yes, we all need one of those. And then the two of them together managed to get me into my gymnastics or whatever I wanted to do without baby. And still it was difficult because I was a guest there. And if I wanted to have a friend come over and it's close to where I grew up. So all my friends are close there. But then she would always, and really beautiful, she would then prepare a cake or whatever. She would be the nice host. But to just sit somewhere with my friend and just talk and watch the baby and do. So it was, it was nice. But it was like, it was not home. Oh, I love that. I think every mom should be willing to ask for that help. Because I yeah. think... We hired a doula for me when I had my baby because my husband was going to be leaving for work. And that was like the best investment I could have made because I was yes. away from my family. And I mean, they came over, they cooked, they cleaned, they took the baby so I could sleep and take a shower. And it just made Beautiful. the transition so much more easier. It was just so nice to have that freedom to be in there for an extra Beautiful. five minutes, right? Yes. And nobody ever had told me like that was even a possibility. That was even an option. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage any mom out there. I mean, best investment I could have made, yes. whether my husband was there or not, because sometimes they would come and he was there and he got help too. <laughs> he learned a few things too. Yes. When we had our first child, we lived just next to the base. So my husband would come also when I was highly pregnant, he would come for lunch and he would cook because I couldn't stand the, the scent in the kitchen. So he would come and cook, have lunchtime with me, and then he would go back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so needed that's so yeah. needed i think we isolate ourselves in that chapter sometimes for me especially because i was living in another state and i didn't know yes. anybody so i was i felt like i was just in this bubble of change alone yes like almost even, like treading water but even when we are together like when we are in our normal surrounding and we have maybe our girlfriends around our friends if they don't have a child they don't get it mm. like some do like I had a friend who was pregnant with me, which was just perfect. So we had <laughs> two babies and she was alone with the with the baby. So my husband was the one to greet his her son in the hospital. And they all thought he's the father. And at one point they gave up on it. It's like, okay, if you think he's the father, just <laughs> you win. But so so he, he even took this part to, to support her there and, and like not for birth, but for later. And then we had two babies the same age, which is just a, a blessing, right? Wow. And then I visited her and her mother would do everything for us and we would be with the two babies in the garden, right? Wow. And I think it's to find these these people or these circumstances or or later when you when the kids start to crawl, you have beautiful, like here we have beautiful offerings where you have like kids playing circles where they roll over things and where it's like there are specific, it's, it's almost like a therapy, but it's very playful. So where they learn how to, or mothers learn how to roll the baby so that it would lift its head or like all these natural reflexes would be supported and the kids would have fun. And you get to know other moms with the kids in the same age, which also helps because very often I thought it's it's me, it's something wrong with me or with my kid. And then I speak with the others and it's it's a little different everywhere, but at the end, it's all the same. Right? Absolutely. And we all have these moments of, oh my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> I just thought if the baby wouldn't be there. <laughs> yeah. 
still we would never give it away right right so it's being patient and gentle with ourselves through all this it's just it's an amazing journey and like when i had held my firstborn the first time it was like oh now i get what unconditional love is <laughs> like the concept of unconditional love before was like a word and there he was and i was just like yeah it's a different love mind blowing love like my mind, my body, everything expanded in a way that yes. I didn't know was even possible. Yes. The way I say it is if I can love my son this much and feel so all like loving like him, like my creator, my God has to love me even more than this. <laughs> and that brought my spiritual game to a point like I'm at this point where I feel so aligned, so connected. And it was the realization of this love that I have for this small child that helped me open up to the possibility that I could be held in that way. I could be supported. I could be seen in such a way that I never knew. And I've been going to church my whole life. My parents have brought us to church every Sunday since I could remember. So oh, I called myself spiritual, but it wasn't literally until I had Everett that I was like, this is it. Like, yeah. like this is it. Like, who knew? And this is beyond expecting something. It's beyond it's beyond anything that we can imagine before, mm. right? And the interesting thing is when you have the second or third child, it just multiplies. Mm. So it's like... And I believe it. There's still enough love for everyone. I believe and it because I have this love inside of me that it feels like it can fill up the whole world. Yes. <laughs> and I've never had that before. Like I thought I've had it, but it wasn't like in my soul. Like it wasn't like a knowing. Yes. Maybe this feeling of unconditional love is one of, or maybe the portal to really connect with the child also and to have like a soul connection because we have this bodily connection, which is like, if you want to imagine, it's like these little beings grow inside our body and they come out so perfectly. It's just, this is an amazing miracle in itself. And then when they're there, I think, for me, like with the second and third child, I even took extra time with only the baby, with the siblings, they could come and visit. But I was like several days just with the newborn mm -hmm. to really get to know him and her and feel into them and connect. And the interesting thing, when I look back now, my daughter is so powerful and so she knows what she wants and everything. And it was the moment she was born, she was like that. Like her personality in the first night of her life was just like, give me some milk. I want to drink now. I don't need to sleep. I don't ask if there's milk or not, but I need it now. <laughs> now she's 16 and she knows what she wants and she goes for it. And she's very loving and she's very straightforward. She's always connected with everybody. And, and she asks for it. She moves. She's like organizing herself and it's amazing. And it's yeah, it was the first night, like the first 24 hours, it already showed her character. Wow. Just another miracle in, in the miracle is like how they're not just, I would say, just perfect in being this human body, but already this personality and all the this beautiful soul and, and they have their own mission and purpose already. Like they come with it, right? And then it's on us mothers to hold the space for them and to be there and to First we carry them and then later it's about letting them go or holding the space. Now that I have three teenagers, it's like, okay, where are they going? When are they coming back? I don't know. <laughs> Phone calls, what happened? So it's like whatever they come with to be there and to listen and to hold the space and to encourage them to, yeah, to do their own thing, right? And it starts with this tiny, tiny, tiny little beautiful beings, babies when they come. Absolutely. They are. They come as perfect, perfectly created. They come knowing exactly what they need to survive. They come out and it's just, it's so crazy to me that they come out and they're just like, okay, you're my mom. <laughs> like, I feel safe here. Yes. I feel relaxed here. Like even beyond the mom, what I organized, we spoke about organizing help. Like what I asked for when, when I had the second and the third child was when I got my second child, my, my mother-in-law was with me for some weeks. So she was there before and then after to take care of the one child I had already of my son. When our third one was born, my father came for several weeks and my son wouldn't show up. So it was like, he was like, okay, I will just stay a little longer. I will stay a little longer. And then one evening he said, we had a theater around the corner. He said, 
there's a beautiful play tonight and I would love to go. And what do you think? And I'm like, that just go. If, they, if there's someone selling a ticket, just go. The moment he was gone, he, he didn't take his phone. Everything started. When he came back, my son was already born. <laughs> oh, that is crazy. <laughs> that was so funny. But then over the next days, which was beautiful, my son was sleeping very often on my father's chest. So they would be in the rocking chair and they would both fall asleep. And if I would take the elder ones to the kindergarten, I would come back and he would say, I couldn't do anything. <laughs> he was just, so they had a lot of time also of this deep bonding. We just, just with the small ones, when they, when they sleep on you, they really relax. And I think was also, I felt it was part of my father really becoming a grandfather with mm. the third child because before he lived in Italy and he would just see us maybe some days a year. So with the third one, he finally <laughs> made it. He got to be there for the beginning. Yes, he got to be there for the beginning. And then afterwards, when I started to do my different coaching educations and travels due to work, he would come and my mother-in-law. Mm. So they together would be able to have the three kids. That's so beautiful. They were a beautiful team. So it was also about imagining different versions of how some support team could look like. Mm. Because this is also part of, of this letting go process, I think, to find people that we can trust our kids with. Mm -hmm. Like we wouldn't give them to anyone. So it's it's having good child care or someone coming over or family. At the moment, for example, I have no one. Mm -hmm. So it's like if my husband's not there, it's me. And I haven't found something new yet with the recent situation. It's not too difficult because I'm here anyway. Yeah. And yet, one and a half years of not really being able to do anything and working from home and everything, it's, I think it's a very personal journey for all of us. And in between, I think it's good to reflect and see, okay, where could I get more help or where mm -hmm. could I create an additional support person or build my support system in a new way to give myself a break, to, yeah. to give myself time maybe for self-care or for a lunch with a friend or just for taking a breath a right. long bath <laughs> just taking a breath <laughs> yes, a friend of mine she told me you know a big win last week was I, ha I had my first bath tub since she gave birth to her son which was <sighs> six months ago and she said it only lasted five minutes but it but was, it was heaven start. heaven <laughs> it's a journey and I think it's a journey of being honest with ourselves mm. and in a soft way mm -hmm. in a gentle way or you said it so beautifully, like giving yourself the grace of doing it, how you're doing it. Yeah, and it's very personal. I think we can share our experiences with each other, but we cannot advise the other mm -hmm. because everybody needs something else to nourish the body and the soul and the heart, right? So it's very different. And I think this is the piece where for us, it's important to connect with our own nature, with our self, with our maybe also higher purpose of where do we want to go beyond mm -hmm. being a mom. Mm -hmm. because what I witnessed in myself is that after some time like first we lose ourselves in there and it's beautiful and then at one point it's like okay so who am I beyond being a mom and the partner or or a wife or whatever and then it's really a journey of balance and taking these little steps and exploring is it is this really what I want because I think very often we have an idea of how this will be mm -hmm. oh don't oh. we <laughs> how great this would be if we do this or that, or we realize that it's an idea that we learned from someone else, mm -hmm. or it's an idea that we had before we had kids. And then maybe our values changed and our whole, what is important to us is just so different that we need to reconnect with what is really important with us now. And the time with the kids usually has a lot more value in our hearts than we can imagine before. So when others say, okay, why do, don't you do these and these things anymore? Maybe they're just not as important in that mm -hmm. moment. And it's our own choice. And it's, yes. it's creating our own way of living with our children and without them and with our husband or, or partner. And then also taking a stand for it lovingly. <laughs> and I think it's really about getting to know us anew. Like once we have kids, we are very different. And then also once in a while, when they grow up, it's again, it's like, okay, what is possible now? How could I support them now maybe differently? Or how could they support me? Part of being a mom is also just being so flexible. We don't know what life will throw at us, right? Mm -hmm. We don't know what will come. But with three kids or with one child, it multiplies. <laughs> like 
there's a phone call from the school and I'm like, okay, so I need to pick up someone. <laughs> yeah. And then I just need to drop everything, right? It's like, okay, I get to the car. I pick them up and then I will see, do we go home? Do we go to the hospital? I don't know, right? So it's always like, okay, so what is the day bringing now? And what does the child need? And what do I need? And it's yeah. an amazing game of juggling. It is. <laughs> That's the best word you could have said for it. It is juggling. And I think the reason why sometimes we get that hiccup where we feel stuck is because we have this expectation of, like you were saying, it's supposed to go this way. We are told, we read books that it's supposed to go one way. And when we're living in it, it's completely different than anything you've read or anything anybody has said. And you start yeah. to ask yourself questions and you start to doubt what you're doing because you're like, it's not, it doesn't look what I thought it was supposed to look like, what I expected it yes. to look like. And I think yeah. that's where a lot of people get that stuck feeling and where they feel, does it feel like ease? It doesn't feel like flow. Like you were saying, like, does it feel like you're just kind of going with the waves of the day or the way it's going to lead you because with kids, definitely you don't know <laughs> what day to day is going to bring. Like some days yeah. I could do all my recordings and my son is asleep. Some days he's like, Nope, mom, we're going to, I'm going to be awake. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be loud. Yeah. Or whatever. You get a call two hours after the child should be home. It's like, I fell asleep in the train. Oh, I don't know no. where I am. <laughs> so it's like, okay, stay calm, figure out where you are. <laughs> then we figure out how you come back or whatever you never know it's like yeah and it's part of life and I think it's it's a reflection of how life is anyway mm -hmm. so even if we don't have kids that's how life works and there's a beautiful quote like this moment when you make a plan in the background God falls off his chair <laughs> because it's like because life happens yeah right? the way I've heard and, it is you make plans and God laughs I think that's one of the big things in life and when we have kids, it's magnified mm -hmm. because we take responsibility for them and we are responsible in a certain way. It needs even more flexibility from us. Mm -hmm. And if I'm on my own, it's still there. We never know what happens. We don't know if we are healthy tomorrow. We don't know, I don't know, if the car breaks down <laughs> or if we get a sudden gift or an invitation. And it's like many of these, we had so many bad examples, but it's also positive. You have to make a decision no matter what. You have to decide, like, even if you're going to be in a good mood, the moment you get out of bed, that's a decision that you get to make. Like, and I think a lot of times people go through life feeling kind of an autopilot. And I think if yes. they would just stop for a second and just make a decision, just even one small one, because it will build upon itself. Yes. Will make days flow so much more seamlessly when you can decide, you know what? Whatever the day brings today, I'm going to have a smile on my face and I'm going to be gentle with myself. I'm going to yes. ask myself, what's the most important thing in this moment? And I'm just going to go with it because no matter what you choose, it's going to work out in some way or another. And then you go with it without judging where you're going mm. yes. or where you're not going. It's this attitude of I'm going with the flow. Or I, you can also say like I follow my intuition. I follow how life nudges me to to move through or how I feel my what my child needs and at the same time it's then really going with it unconditionally mm -hmm. without judging us for what we're not doing yeah what I shifted for myself now is I have my projects and I know in each project where it wants to go very often I don't know the next step yet or I, I know the one step but not the tenth step because I stopped making these very fixed goals and then it's a mix of dancing with what happens mm -hmm. and following this inner nudge this inner guidance I, I say or inner my inner leader my intuition whatever mm -hmm. you call it to then know okay now I take a step in this project mm -hmm. it's like dancing with opportunities and really following this inner voice of okay now you take the step and then what I feel is when I follow this inner guidance or for some it's it's like a they call it like divine guidance. They feel mm -hmm. like... I call yes, it my God voice. The God voice or what I feel, I love the word, the calling. 
Sometimes we feel a calling to do something and we don't know why, we don't know how it will look like. It's like something's pulling our heart mm -hmm. in a certain direction. And for me, this is part of following the guidance, is following this pull, this whatever it is, right? If it's our heart, if it's our intuition, inner guidance, God voice. And I think that's the magical piece because then we are in this present moment and we feel and we have this inner knowing of, okay, this is the next step I'm taking. And very often what I witnessed in my life and in, with clients, with mentees, very often it doesn't make sense to the brain. And then it's this being courageous and taking the step, trusting this calling, this pull and taking the step and then experiencing this next moment. Mm -hmm. And very often what I found is like, it leads us to amazing places where Magic we've never gone if we would want to plan it very strategically. It is magical. Right? And I think this God was is beautiful. <laughs> I feel like when we are really connected with our heart and for me personally, it, it works when I'm connected with my heart and then I connect with the earth and with the heavens. Sometimes when I'm too much in my head, I feel like I'm, I'm losing the connection with the earth, with my floor. And then I really go out barefoot and really connect mm -hmm. with the planet. So I feel like this nourishing energy from below. And at the same time, when I connect to the divine, it can come in from above. And then for me, I have this picture, it meets in my heart, and then I can create from my heart. And then I'm guided, and then I'm okay with whatever happens. This is divinely guided, and it's mm -hmm. a divine timing, which I cannot understand, and yeah. I don't need to understand. And I think this translates into a lot of different parts in our life, and also with the children, right? Sometimes we're just there holding them, giving them space to experience and go through their own stuff because we cannot do it for them. And no. this is part which really can ache in your heart. <laughs> it's like to be there and hold them. Sometimes it's holding the space without even holding them and supporting them through, right? I have, for example, some pieces that I wouldn't tell my son because I know that if I would tell him, he would judge himself. So I keep them to me. I hold the space and I support him in his language in his beliefs, in his, where he's passionate, in his values. Like all three of them, they're developing amazingly and they're so different. Every Like all three are so different. And it's the same mom, it's the same dad, it's the same house, but they have different, they have different friends. They have, they have a different perception of their life and their world. You're saying this beautifully, like holding space for them to basically bloom for them to unfold into the person that they are. I have a feeling that people don't really know what that means to hold that space, to allow that blooming, especially when for a child or a first time mom, or you know what I mean? Like, how do you hold that space to let them be who they need to be in any given moment? Well, for me, not to judge, like not to think that I know how it should be for the child. And if I see a path that it could take, I can offer it, but as an option. And when they are small, to, to really be not overprotective and let them run with their little bike, to have this open this space and hold it to, so that they can make their own experiences. And at the same time, be there to really give them clear boundaries and, and hold them also from something if it's dangerous. Like being there and then being like the guardian, like... And also later in life, when they grow up, for example, whenever a teacher does something unjust or, or they, they speak about it or something happens in school. And my kids know that if there's something which is not right, they just need to tell me. And then I'm there. And then I'm with the principal of the. It's like no matter what, right? No, I don't question. This is like a sacred moment when your child can speak its truth, feel safe to do it. And the next day, my husband and I went to the school and it was in the big holidays, but still that two days, the principal was there and we were there and we said, we need to change this. And I think they had challenges moving students around, but it's small compared to like a choice that goes for several years, right? Mm -hmm. I think these are the moments where you're rewarded for holding your kids and not judging them and then mm -hmm. know that because then they can come and they can speak their heart and they can share also what happens maybe with friends. How do we allow that? How? How? <laughs> like, we want our little people to speak their truth. We want them to be able to say what's on their mind. That's like the dream, I think, for any parent. But it yeah. seems from what I know when I was growing up <laughs> and for mm -hmm. what I know of friends of mine, 
like a lot of times kids are afraid to speak their truth yeah on one hand they witness how we are with other people because they witness everything if we would have a funny hand movement like oh no the little one would the next day like oh no <laughs> it's like oh okay <laughs> they see and hear everything this phrase that I use with holding the space, that's what I do with my mentees as well, right? When I do coaching, when I do mentoring and be it with business or with in spiritual matters, I'm always holding the space for the other person to be in their truth and to be on their path. I'm not speaking these words to my kids, but somehow they witness how it is. They witness me with friends on my couch. Like when my friend is there and she's in tears sharing what she's sharing and I'm just there with her, right? And then Later on, we have dinner together and everything is funny again. <laughs> and when we are with them, maybe it's good to be contemplating our own thoughts mm -hmm. and contemplating and being aware of what we speak to them. Since I was a kid, I was very aware of every thought and every like everything that I speak. And I'm, it's very much about when I say a, a word and it's not the right word, I, I take it back and I rephrase it because I know how powerful our words are. Mm -hmm. And what we think is also very powerful because it's word we, we speak to ourselves. I think it starts with holding the space for us, walking our path. And maybe as a mother taking this, I don't know, three times a week, two hours for ourselves where they cannot rush in or maybe... Yeah, where they see, oh, she holds space for herself as well. And then being with them and being really with them, which is a big challenge for me because my mind is always, not always, but very often everywhere. <laughs> Sounds like what you're saying is we have to be the mirror that our children can reflect, like look back and see we're doing the work on ourselves to hold the space for ourselves. So therefore it's easier for them to do the same. We're speaking our truth so that it's easier for them to speak their yes. truth. And the beautiful thing is that we don't explain it to them. We just feel it. We live it and they feel it. It's interesting because like when they grow up, you, you witness which topics they would speak with their father or with their mother or maybe with an uncle or with like my best friend. She's, she's like a sister for me and she's here like every Christmas mm. and she lives alone. So she's like, oh, a lot of times she's here and, yeah, and some things they speak with her and wow. um, or with with the younger sister of my husband for my daughter she's an amazing connection mm -hmm. because she's she's young she has no kids yet she's still in university now she's a young teacher and they go shopping and mm -hmm. it's a different vibe it's something she wouldn't share with me because i'm the mom right and this is something i consciously speak with my children it's like you can do whatever you want. I love that. Please find out what you love doing. And then maybe do a one-week apprenticeship somewhere and see if this is interesting or not. My mom, she gave me the advice back when, when, when I started to study. She said, you know how I did it? I went to university and for one year I visited every class I was remotely interested. <laughs> like anything. And after one year, she decided what she wants to study. Yeah. And we don't get that permission often. Like usually we're told, what do you want to be when you grow up? When you're like four years old and you're like, huh? Like you don't really know. So yeah, giving or, yourself that permission, giving the kids the permission to play, giving yourself the permission to play. And yes. And not asking them, what do you want to be? But what do you want to do? Mm. Well, how do you want to change the world? Mm, I example. love that question. Because they all want to change the world. Somehow. I love that question. And then for some, it's, uh, I want to be with animals or over time you will find if they if they're if they're more physical like they they need physical touch or they're more innovative in their brain or like these are pieces that you can explore with them and then ask them so so how what would you do if you would ever right had your own company or my little one he's very dream. much into cars yep let right? them use their imagination and then it's the interesting thing is and this is Oh, funny translates also in my work because I do a lot of vision work with people having this vision and then being guided from within towards sometimes the vision shifts during your path but for the kids there's so many different professions that they can do in the end to have this feeling of fulfillment because mm -hmm. they feel oh that's how I could change the world or that's how I could be a happy mom or that's how I could contribute to whatever and it's nowadays, it's never connected to a specific profession, like being aware of our expectations, mm -hmm. living this speaking and being our truth ourselves, mm -hmm. 
and asking them the questions to spark their dreams maybe yep what do you want to do how do you want to feel how do you want to change the world and even between like when you have several kids it's sometimes it's really a balance act of not like you <laughs> say it's so good that you do this and the other one is good in different things so it's like it's like giving them also having conversations they're okay mm -hmm. you're good in different things and it's perfect it's okay i see a lot of siblings now adults grew up being always compared to their siblings mm -hmm. like look at her she's so good in school you should blah blah or why are you not good in school all your siblings are uh, in in sports look at your brother and this is something that can happen so easily mm -hmm. and i so think it starts we, with expectations like you're saying is having those expectations how we think it should go yeah, oh, we don't think of it at all. We mm -hmm. just say it. And the kids interpret it of, oh, I'm not good enough because I'm not as a sports whatever, like my sister or brother. And even if we said so in like by accident, mm -hmm. if we are aware later, then it's really something Bringing that it we can cultivate mm -hmm. to support them to be okay with who they are mm -hmm. and happy and, and curious of what more is there. We have enough self-judgment in ourselves mm -hmm. and and we are moving through it. And maybe sometimes when they are older, it's good to also share that we also have these doubts mm -hmm. and like share our truths and our path, not in every detail because it maybe then it's too much for them. And then the, again, there comes the intuition and the, this like we nudge and we share a little bit and, and we show we are real. When I see my kids, it's like a miracle that it turned out to be like that. I'm like, I didn't do anything like <laughs> I still judge myself for whatever I did not do or how the house looks like or I'm always away or I had a period where I was very much in the office in the evenings and afternoons and one comment of my daughter really shook me she was like mom you're never there mm. and I was like okay so I had a review on my so schedule and I, I shifted everything to the mornings and to the later evening when they're really in bed so now it's less time and it's fine, right? So it's focused time and, and I have less one-on-one -on -one clients because it's it's just a time thing. Also being aware of these comments that the kids, because mm -hmm. they drop they drop us the info, they give it mm -hmm. to us. Even if, if we will listen. Even if they're like screaming at us, right? It's a cry for help. It's a cry for whatever, right? It's not just, and then the big one comes and hugs me and is like, you're, beautiful. you're an amazing mom. And I'm like, Oh, oh thank and you that's what i needed here. today his, his chin is on my head like he's so <laughs> tall so it's like oh yes i take that thank you mm. um, this conversation has been so beautiful i am so thankful for you i feel like you blessed me today honestly with mm -hmm. your nuggets that you shared and this conversation is going to serve a lot of people so thank you so much thank i would me. love our listeners of the make life fun podcast to know where they can find you where they can support you where they can follow you well, my name is antonia daniek i didn't mention it before the easiest way is to find me on facebook and directly connect or on my website it's antoniadaniek.com i will share the link with you yeah, there are some amazing journeys coming up to support even more people. This motherhood journey is one of my own. And at the same time, I, I feel like these topics really weave through all of our life and work. Yes. This thank you for spreading the world. And thank you for bringing fun <laughs> into life because life has changed. And if we make it playful and joyful, it's even, yeah. That's well, calling thank you us. so much. Thank you for having me. Yes. Thanks for listening to the Make Life Fun Show. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave us a review. We are also on YouTube as well. And wherever you like to listen to your podcast, let us know what you love about this show. Because the more you love it, the more other people can enjoy it too. And that ripple effect, right? So I am so glad you are here. Stay blessed by the best. Until next time, we will talk soon.